Hello, a great welcome to this presentation. So it's all about any types tutorial for the analysis of isolated foundations. So here we'll consider uh, a footing with the uniaxial moments. So let us uh, start with uh, the problem statement. So the objective is to demonstrate the analysis of an isolated foundation subjected to an axial load P and a uniaxial moment M using the ETAPS software. So the results that we obtain from the ETAP software include the settlement profile and the distribution of the soil bearing pressures. So for this problem, we'll consider very specifically two cases, one corresponding to a small eccentricity resulting in a full contact and a large eccentricity resulting in a partial contact. Now the results obtained from the ETAP software are compared with the theoretical solutions for both the cases. So the parameters for the problem involves the length L of the footing is chosen as 4 meters, so L is equal to 4 meters, and the width B is equal to 3 meters, and the thickness T is considered as 500 mm in this case. And uh, we have uh, used the material property in such a way that a rigid foundation is modeled in order to enable us to compare the results with the standard cases. And for the problem, we considered the bearing strata as a medium dense sand. That corresponds to a modulus of subgrid reaction value Kx of 40,000 kN per meter cube. So the two cases basically involves a set of values of P and M that results in a small eccentricity and a large eccentricity. For example, in case 1, we have P is equal to 1000 kN and M is equal to 300 kN per meter, wherein we find that E is equal to 0.3 meters, that is less than L by 6. And in case 2, we have P equal to 1000 kN and M is equal to 1000 kN meter with E equal to 1 meter that is greater than L by 6, which corresponds to a large eccentricity case. So let me just uh, quickly review the theoretical solutions available with us. All of you must be familiar with it. So I have presented the two cases over here and one corresponds to a small eccentricity case wherein the eccentricity of the applied load calculated E is equal to M by P is less than L by 6. And in this case, we know that the entire length of the footing will be in contact with the soil, implying that the soil pressures will be compressive. And at one end, the pressure will be maximum. For example, in this case, on the left edge, we have got the maximum soil pressure and it's given as P by A into 1 plus of 6 by 6 E by L, where A is the footing area and P is the applied load. And the minimum ordinate at the other end, Q minimum, is obtained as P by A into 1 minus 6 E by L. And here is shown a sketch for the case 2, wherein the applied moment M is such that the eccentricity E is equal to M by P is greater than L by 6. In this case, obviously, we know that the full length of the footing will not be in contact and there will be a case of a partial separation. And in this case, the contact length X as marked in the sketch is obtained as 3 into L by 2 minus E and we know that the maximum pressure Qmax is obtained from the force equilibrium as 2P divided by B into X. So we'll compute the contact length, the maximum and the minimum pressures in all the cases and then compare with the ETAPS results in order to have a proper verification. Okay, fine. So this is the ETAPS model that we have used. Essentially, you can say that it consists of a frame element for the column and we have uh, a shell element that is used for uh, the footing element and then we have uh, the slab support over the area springs. So in order to explain this modeling parameters, let me now take you to the ETAPS model. So this is uh, my ETAPS 3D model for the isolated footing. As you can see that it essentially consists of two components. One is a slab element that is of dimensions 4 meters by 3 meters. And I have modeled a simple RC column of dimension 500 by 500 in order to effectively transfer the load to the uh, plate element. And um, as you can see that uh, the entire slab is divided in such a way that uh, the size of one uh, simple element is 0.25 meters by 2.25 meters. So that uh, along the x-axis, uh, that is in the length of direction, I have got around 16 elements and along the width of direction, I have uh, 12 elements. So now let me take you to some of the parameters that is used for the modeling. So for example, if you see the material properties, here you'll find that I have defined uh, 
a material with a name of C O N C. Let me just show you the properties. So here you can see that uh, the material type is uh, chosen as uh, concrete. And uh, one thing is that uh, I have set the unit weight is equal to zero uh, because I presume that uh, the load includes the sulfate of the footing as well. And here uh, one uh, interesting thing is that I have set uh, the modulus of elasticity of E of concrete as 25 into 10 raised to 6 is almost a thousand times the actual uh, E value of concrete. This is to simulate the rigid action uh, for the footing so that we will be able to compare directly the results obtained with the theoretical uh, solutions available with us. So now let me take you to uh, some of the section properties that we have defined. So if you go straight to the frame sections, here we are, you'll find that uh, I have used a column section of 500 by 500 uh, defined through call 500 by 500. So if you want to see the properties, so find the material is C O N C and you'll find that um, it has got uh, a dimension of 500 by 500 mm and next one is uh, we have uh, the section properties for the slab element so if you go to the slab slab sections in the slab section you'll find that i have defined a property called as footing so if i press it and to show you the properties here you'll find that uh, the material is uh, C O N C that's a concrete and we have used a shell thick formulation and uh, the type is a slab and the thickness is 500 mm so that's okay fine and now uh, let me uh, take you to uh, the definition of another important property that is uh, the area spring properties as you can see that uh, the entire footing is uh, supported on a set of uh, area springs that is uh, located at the joints so let me just uh, show you the properties of the springs that is defined for this case. Obviously, these are the area springs. And uh, here you'll find that, um, uh, yes, the spring is defined uh, with a property of uh, 40,000 kilonewton per meter cube. That is the modulus of subgrade reaction in the local three direction. And remember that uh, we know from our basic understanding that the soil springs cannot take any tension so it is required for this analysis that we set this area springs to be compression only so essentially we are running a nonlinear analysis so that is regarding uh, the property of uh, the area springs now let me also show you what are the loads applied for this case so sign for example the joint load force so here you'll find that I applied an axial load of uh, minus 1000 kilonewton and a moment about the y-axis of 1000 kilonewton meter and this will result in an eccentricity is equal to 1 meter that is greater than 4 by 6 that is a b by 6 dimension which means that the value of the moment is such that uh, only a partial uh, length of the footing will be in contact and we will have a case of uh, footing separation in this case. So that's regarding this uh, column load. And I think we have covered all. So we can now proceed for running the analysis. So I'll just run the analysis here. Okay, fine. So let us uh, start visualizing some of the important results. The first one I would like to show you is, uh, okay, fine. So let me just take you to the plan view. So I will uh, show you the base one. So, uh, okay. So let us uh, quickly uh, see the variation of the soil pressure uh, along this footing slab. So you can uh, directly go to the display and uh, uh, go for the force or the stress diagram and select the soil pressure. So that's okay for me. And here, uh, okay, fine. So here you will find that, yes, this is the distribution of the contact pressure or the soil pressure along the length. And here, uh, two things are interesting. From this, the way in which the, you know, that the condos are being marked, it is very uh, easy for us to conclude that the soil pressure varies uh, linearly. That's number one. And number two is that, look here, at this point, the soil pressure is marked as a zero, right? So almost, I, I can tell you that, yes, up to this length, that is equal to say one, two, three, four, that is around say one meter, 
the footing is uh, has lost the contact which means that uh, the effective uh, width of the footing that is in contact will be 4 minus uh, 1 uh, that is equal to 3 meters and uh, uh, that will uh, uh, be supported by our calculations that is 3 into L by 2 minus E so that is a 3 into L by 2 is nothing but a 2 2 minus 1 that is a E value that is equal to 3 meters okay fine so means that uh, here uh, now let me just uh, show uh, show you some selective value at this point you have got say 92 kilometer per meter square here 162 kilometer per meter square and the maximum one at this extreme edge that is around say 220 kilometer per meter square so this is uh, everything regarding the distribution of the soil pressure now let me quickly show you an, another interesting uh, uh, output parameter that is nothing but the deformation in order to visualize the deformation, let me uh, uh, go to another view that is, uh, for example, the elevation. Here I have defined a, a another grid that passes through this column center line. So that is at y equal to 1.5. Okay, so now let me take you to the uh, deformed shape. So, for example, uh, here let me just display here uh, the deformed shape. So, here, okay, the load case is okay for me. Okay, fine, good. So, here you will find that here the deformation at this point it's around say 1.8 mm, and assume that means plus 1.8 mm, that means there is an uplift basically. And here, here it is 1.4 mm, and here it is 0.88 mm, that's still up 0.424. And at this point, it is almost uh, zero. That means I have got one, two, three, four, four into point two. That is equal to one meter. That is losing contact. And from this point onwards, we'll find that the entire uh, uh, displacements are in the minus uh, direction. That is minus nine point point nine four eight. And this at this extreme edge, obviously, we'll expect uh, the maximum. Um, uh, settlement that is equal to minus 5.52 mm so uh, these results are again uh, uh, visualized in the form of the plots uh, in the presentation so let us go back to the presentation okay fine so let us now uh, start reviewing the ETAPS results so we will review the results separately so first we'll take up the case case one where in the eccentricity we know that it is 0.3 meters which is less than L by 6, thereby we have the full contact. So here is shown uh, the, the distribution of uh, the soil pressures along the length of the footing. And as you can see that uh, here is a compiled a small table wherein uh, in the first column I have provided the location x in meters. X mean, the location x means that uh, here x is equal to 0 corresponds to this point and x is equal to 4 meters that corresponds to the extreme edge. So, reviewing the uh, soil pressures, which is obtained from the tabs, we find that uh, the minimum pressure, first of all, all the pressures are negative, implying that the entire length of the footing is in contact with the soil, and the minimum pressure that we compute is minus 45.2, and the maximum pressure, that is obviously at this point, is equal to minus 119.6. Now, let us quickly verify how these uh, computed pressures through e tabs tally with the hand calculations. For example, through the hand calculations, we know that Q max in this case, where an E is less than L by 6, is obtained as P by A, that is 1000 by 3 into 4, into 1 plus 6, 6 E by, divided by L, that is 1 plus of 6 into 0.3 by 4, which means that Q max is 120.8, and this matches very well with the ETAPS computer value of 119.6. And the Q minimum is, we know that is uh, again P by A into 1 minus 6 E by L. Substituting, we obtain the Q, Q minimum value is 45.8. And this tallies very well with the minimum pressure that is obtained using the E tabs, that is 45.2. Now, let me quickly take you to the other important uh, result parameter that is nothing but the settlement. Here again, uh, you will find that. Uh, the first column is uh, regarding the position of the points described as the x coordinate, and here is the settlement. And as you can see, that uh, the entire settlement is negative, which means uh, that uh, the full length of the footing is in uh, contact with the soil. And obviously, we find that the settlement increases linearly from uh, one end to, to, from a value of minus 1.13 mm and increases to a maximum value of minus 2.99 mm. 
Now let us uh, review the similar results for case 2 wherein the eccentricity is greater than r by 6. So this is the case 2 uh, wherein we expect a partial contact. So here again R listed uh, the computed uh, soil pressures obtained from uh, the ETAPS uh, analysis and uh, as you can see the interesting thing is that you will find that up to a length of uh, 1 meter that means up to a location of 1 meter we find that the pressures are almost zero which means that for this length we find that there is a total separation or the contact length for this problem will be for minus 1 that is equal to 3 meters and we find that the maximum pressure uh, it increases from zero value that is observed at 1 meter location to a uh, extreme edge location of a 220 kPa. Now let us quickly start verifying these values with the hand calculations. For example, contact length we know that is 3 in 12 by 2 minus E. So in this case it's 3 meters and that is obviously that is indicated uh, confirmed by this number. That is we find that for a length of 1 meter the pressure is almost equal to 0. So and coming to the Q max value that is nothing but 2P by B into X and this works out to be 222.0 kPa and this uh, matches very well with uh, the ETAPS value that is 220 kPa. Now in a similar way let us uh, start reviewing the sediment profile. So obviously we know that uh, for this large ex eccentricity we expect uh, uh, for a footing length of 1 meter an uplift and this is indicated by uh, a positive settlement uh, maximum 1.85 and uh, from that we find that the settlement uh, is purely compressive and the extreme edge we note down a settlement of 5.5 mm. So let us quickly uh, now summarize the results. So here uh, I have provided you the two plots and the first plot um, it is uh, nothing but it is a settlement profile wherein along the x-axis I have taken the position of the points in along the x-axis in meters and along the y-axis we have the settlements and we find that as ex expected uh, both the profiles are linear and we find that uh, in case 1 that corresponds to a small eccentricity case the entire settlement is negative that is uh, the full length of the footing will be in contact and for the case 2 that is uh, the large eccentricity as expected uh, we have um, an uplift of the footing uh, for a contact length of 1 meter and then uh, uh, the settlement uh, remains compressive for the balance portion indicating their contact with the soil and we note down a maximum settlement of 5.5 mm at a point of uh, 4 meters so that's all about regarding the settlement profile now a similar plot is also made for uh, the variation of the soil bearing pressures so again uh, along the x-axis we have got the position in x position of the point in along the x-axis in meters and on the y-axis we have got the soil pressures and for in case 1 which corresponds to a small eccentricity we find that the pressure is, uh, is the soil pressure is entirely negative that is the demonstrating that the full length of the footing is in contact and we find that uh, the pressure uh, increases linearly from a value of minus 50 to approximately for example here is a 120 kPa and for the second case wherein we have got a larger eccentricity we find that uh, the pressure is uh, zero for the one meter length of the footing indicating their uh, separation from the soil and from that point onwards we find that the, again the pressure builds up positively that is a full compressive stresses and we find uh, that the maximum pressure uh, develops in the extreme edge that is around say 220 kPa. So that's all regarding this presentation. So uh, as usual please subscribe to the channel if you have any comments uh, because I am finding that for some videos you, I am not receiving any kind of comments I am just um, seeing uh, okay fine it's a good uh, video no comments but I would request you to provide some healthy comments so that uh, we'll be able to uh, progressively increase uh, the quality of the presentations and if you find that some contents are, need to be included for the in, within the video so please let me know so that's all for this presentation thanks a lot and have a nice day